Hello chess fans and welcome to chess vibe and today I'm going to show you a pretty interesting game and today motive is to show you the game and to tell you the idea how to crush the London system because uh, many players play the London system and it's a very nice opening and also very strong and positional opening and to a uh, play against it is, is pretty hard so today we are going to see a game and you, you you will get an idea how to crush the London system with the black pea and the game is going to be very interesting so till then stay tuned and keep watching chess fights so uh there is 2474 rated player uh, which is playing with the white pieces and we have 2559 rated player which is playing with the black pieces. So basically both the players are grandmasters uh, so, um, and very strong players. Um, so let's check it out what happened in the game. So Petkov with the white pieces started with 1d4 and Nikol Nikolov with the black pieces replied with knight to f6. We have bishop to f4, uh, the lender system and black played d5. We have e3. After e3, uh, tell me in the comment box, what will you play uh, in this position from the black side? Uh, what I used to play uh, before I saw the game, uh, I used to play bishop to f5, followed by e6, bishop d6, and yeah, just simply developing the pieces, and which is the most natural idea. Uh, but after e3, in the game, black decided to play c5, which is the which are which we are going to see why this move is very important the move c5 is very important and it should be played with the black pieces after c5 white played c3 which is very normal stuff for white black uh, white plays c3 because white wants to keep the structure like this after c3 black played knight to c6 developing the piece we have knight to d2 bishop to f5 knight to f3 and now we have queen to b6 and after queen b6 black is threatening to capture the pawn on b2 and after queen b6 white decided to play queen to b3 which is which looks the most natural move but uh, many players in this position from the white side plays usually bishop to e2 which looks very natural actually and as the top player it is played the most well after bishop b2 what white is saying Okay, I'm allowing you to capture my b2 pawn and I'm going to simply castle and perhaps I'm going to put some pressure on the queen on b2. So after bishop b2, you should remember to always capture the pawn on b2. The reason you should capture the pawn on b2 in this position here is because you are having the bishop on f5 which controls the diagonal till the b1 square. And after queen into b2, uh, white can go for castle which looks the most natural move. If white tries to play knight h4, eliminating the bishop, you can play bishop to c2 and it, uh, white is forced to play queen c1. And after a queen trade, you can play bishop g6 and yeah, you are simply better. That's why a knight h4 is not a nice idea and white tries to castle. After white tries to castle, you can play c4, the main move. After c4, you are hitting the pawn on c3. So, if now white tries to play knight h4, you can play bishop c2, hitting the queen. If queen c1, you can simply queen, trade the queen and you can play bishop e4 and you are better. And if white tries to play queen e1, stopping the queen trade, you can simply play e6 and you are simply completely winning in the position. Even the pawn on c3 is hanging. You can play at some point bishop a3. You can even push the pawn on a b5, b4 and yeah, you are simply winning in the position. So that was the idea. Uh, this bishop e2 was not played and white went for the queen b3 idea, which is most natural move. After queen b3, black replied with a very nice move and which is actually forced, uh, which forces white to play the game. After queen b3, we have c4 battle. After c4, black hits the queen on b3 and knight forces for white to trade the queens. Or is white is not having a nice move. If he tries to play queen a3, defending the pawn after e5, 
it's completely lost. The queen is attacked, the bishop is attacked, it's over. So you have to trade the queen, and after trading the queen, white played a3. And after a3, black played b5. And after b5, the idea of black in this position here is, black wants to play b4 in the position. And you cannot capture the pawn with the a pawn because the rook is hanging on a1. So if you try to capture the pawn with the c pawn, I'm going to simply capture the pawn with the knight. You cannot capture, remember guys, because the rook is hanging on a1. That is the idea. So that's why after b5, white played simply rook, uh, rook c1. So that black cannot push the pawn on b5, b4 because now white can capture the pawn with the a pawn. So after rook c1, black played a h6. The reason black played h6 in this position was uh, if black tries to play e6 in this position uh, because black wants to develop the bishop from the f8 square. Now comes a nice move from the white side which is knight to h4. And after knight h4, I'm si simply hitting the bishop on f5. And if you look the carefully on the, from bishop on f5 diagonal, the bishop is tremendously powerful. Controlling all the light scores. And it's just simply very bad for black to give the tremendously powerful bishop from the f5 square for the knight on h4. And yeah, you can you cannot move a bishop anyway. If you try to play g6, you can still capture white can still capture the bishop, and there is no square for the bishop left. So that's why before e6, remember to play h6. So that after knight h4, now you are having a square for the bishop to go back on h7. So after h6, white played h3. Uh, the idea is same for the black as well, for white as well, so that black cannot play knight h5. After h3, black played e6. We have bishop e2, knight d7, and now the idea of playing knight d7 in the position here is very nice. The idea of playing knight d7 here here, before playing knight d7, black realized that the knight on f6 is not doing much. So he decided to uh, find the best square for the knight. And please tell me what should be the best square for the knight on d7. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think. So now I'm going to reveal the answer. After knight d7, uh, the best square for the knight from the d7 square is to put the knight to a4 and we can reach our destination only in two moves we followed by knight b6 and knight a4 hitting the pawn on b2 and you cannot play rook b1 to defend it because my bishop is covering it and that's just the tremendous idea after knight d7 white played g4 hitting the bishop we went bishop to h7 and now we have bishop d1 by white so White is forced to play now bishop c2. White wants to trade the queens at any cost because the bishop on h7 is just tremendously powerful. That's why bishop d1 was played. And after bishop d1, black played knight to b6. Idea very simple. He wants to play knight f4 at some point. We have bishop c2 and we have a bishop trade now. After bishop trade, now black played a tremendous move, a very nice move. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for black in this position. So, okay. So, the best move for black in this position is to play b4. Boom. If you found the move, congratulations. After b4, white castle. But if you try to capture the pawn with the a pawn by playing a into b4, now comes the most natural move in the position rook a1 check. And you cannot put any piece in the between because my rook will simply capture it. So you have to move the queen, king, which is forced. After king e2, I can simply capture the rook and it's winning. So you cannot capture the pawn with the a pawn. So if you try to capture the b pawn with the c pawn, now I'm going to play a very nice move, knight into b4. Boom. After knight into b4, I'm hitting your knight, I'm hitting your rook on c2. As well as there is a very powerful move, knight d3 check. Hitting the king, hitting the bishop, as well as the pawn on b2. So, after capturing, after capturing the pawn on b4, if you still try to capture my knight, it would lead to the same position. So that cannot happen. So that was the reason. 
uh why they didn't capture the pawn uh, capture the pawn on b4 and he simply decided to cap ca castle after castle black decided to play b3 all those who were thinking why not to capture simply b into a3 you can go for it but this doesn't give you the best advantage in the position after b into a3 white can play the best move in the position which is rook to b1 and after rook b1 if you try to capture the pawn after simply rook b into b2 it's an equal position actually because yeah i'm hitting your knight i'm hitting your pawn it's an equal position and if you even try to you know, push the pawn to a2 i can simply play rook a1 and i can actually at some point i can push the pawn to b3 trade the pawns and after trading the pawns i'm hitting your a2 pawn with two rooks and it's an equal position so that was the idea black didn't capture the pawn and he pushed the pawn to b3 hitting the rook to c2 so white is forced to play rook c1 and now black simply played knight a4 hitting the pawn on b2 so white is forced to defend the pawn by playing rook b1 and now i, I play bishop d and now black played bishop d a3 Well, wow. playing bishop into a3 is the key move. If you just don't go for the sacrifice, you can't do anything. So you have to go for the sacrifice by playing bishop into a3. After bishop into a3, you have to capture the bishop. If you try to play something like rook a1, hitting the bishop, I can simply capture the pawn on b2, and the knight is actually defended with the rook. That side is not going to work. That's why white simply captured the bishop. and now black captured the pawn on c3 with the knight hitting the rook on b1 white played rook b2 you cannot play rook c1 hitting the knight because knight e2 check and the rook is lost that's why rook b2 and after rook b2 black gave a check king b2 he captured the bishop with the knight white captured and now we have rook into a3 uh all those who are thinking why not playing c3 in the position you are hitting the rook as well as the knight after playing c3 actually after rook into b3 you capture capture and actually it's an equal position now. and yeah actually at the place of capturing you can play simply rook into b7 and yeah additional uh, defending the pawn on d4 and it's actually equal position completely equal position that why it's not a good idea to play c3 in the position and you should play rook into a3 black seems to capture the pawn after capturing the pawn you can see uh, it's uh, basically it's against one piece against two pawn but just look at the material just look at the position black position is just completely nice and white can't do anything yeah it's actually very hard to play with the white pieces in the position So after rook into a3, white played rook c1, stopping the c3 idea. White black played rook a2. He wants to, he wants the rook trade, and you have rook b1. If you go for the rook trade, and after rook trade you play rook a1, hitting the pawn. I can play knight b4, and after knight b4, I'm protecting the pawn. And now my idea is to play king d7 or perhaps king e7, or you can even castle, and uh, followed by rook a8. and i want to, and i want to play knight to c2 hitting the rook promote the queen and it's all over so that was the reason we didn't have a rook trade and we have rook b1 keeping the pieces on the board now we have knight a5 uh, giving protection to the pawns because at some point white is preparing to capture the pawn on c4 by sacrificing the knight for the two pawns So that's why black doesn't want it, and he played knight f5, protecting the pawns. And after playing knight f5, white played knight to f1. We have b5, uh, f5 by white. Black simply castled knight to e5, and now black simply ruled the pawns all over the board by playing b4 now. And now c3 is just extremely natural move in the position. We have knight e3. First we have b2 pushing the pawn hitting the rook white played rook to e1 we have c3 knight to d7 hitting the rook on f8 
So black simply played rook c8. We have knight b6, rook to c6, and we have knight into d5. Uh, going for the knight sacrifice. If you try to play something like knight d2 in this position, after knight d2, I can play anything in the position. I can play rook c8. I can even play c2, and it's completely win. You have to play knight into c2, and after rook into c2, it's completely winning. So that was the reason. He went for the sacrifice to try to do something. Black simply captured the knight with the rook. And he didn't go on for this idea with capturing the knight with the pawn. You can go for it. It's still winning for black completely. Uh, perhaps the white, is, white will try to play rook here checking h7. But it's uh, perhaps followed by knight to d7. This crazy idea with knight f8. But you must play g6 or g5. And it's now completely winning for black. So, but black win with strife. He captured the knight with the rook, gave an exchange sacrifice, and after knight into b6, we have b, b uh, c2 by black, hitting the rook on b1. White played king f3, and now you must play knight b3 in the position. Uh, if you try to, if you are thinking that why not simply capturing the Rook and queen, and after rook into b3, rook into b1. If you look the position and ca carefully, you cannot play rook a1 because the pawn on b2 is hanging. And actually, there is, there is actually, it's very hard for black to make any progress now. It's still winning, but you have to find the most accurate move in the position because perhaps you cannot move the knight from the a5 square because. White is planning to play knight c4, hitting the pawn on b2, and would be draw. That's why you must not capture the rook, and you must play knight b3. Very nice move because the pawns are the rooks are not going anywhere. You can play knight b3 because after knight b3, you are planning a very nice move, knight to d2 check, hitting the rook, and also you are threatening to make a queen on c1. Uh, after. King f3 you cannot make a queen because white will simply capture it and make a, if you try to make a queen, white will capture and it's an equal position. That's why rook b uh, knight b3 was played first. After knight b3, white resigned the position because if you try to play king e3 in the position, black simply going to make a queen, try to capture. I'm going to make a queen, capture, capture, and I'm simply rook plus. And even I'm having a very powerful pawn on b4. Which is going to be queen in future. So that was the reason after moving back to b3, white resigned on the move number 35. So this was the epic game. Uh, and white, black simply crushed white position in the London system. And yeah, because it, it was simply a forced move, a forced move combination after queen to b6. It, I'll just show you once. After black played queen b6 in this position on the move number 6, white is forced to play queen b3 and after c4 and you can see it's a, it's a forced combination and after a3 you can see black house simply crushed the white position because it's all forced and the natural move. You just need to play nice chess and you will have the game in your, in your pocket. So this was the amazing game and I just showed you in the game how to crush the London system with the black pieces. So if you like this game and this entire setup, then please like to my video because it motivates me to make more new videos like this. So I'm going to come up with these more exciting videos like this. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching Chess Fights.